Hi, thanks for watching today. I'm Mark Roots, Marketing Manager for the H8S and H8SX microcontrollers here at Renaissance Technology. The topic today is adding a color TFT panel to an embedded system and driving it with a simple flash microcontroller. Now, using a color panel like this in your end product not only adds value, but it gives you differentiation from your competition. And once you choose to use a color panel like this, it's very easy to add a, a touchscreen interface, making your product naturally interactive. So what I'm talking about here today is graphic animation, such as you, as you would find, for example, in an oven controller or some white goods. Now here's an example of an oven controller display being driven by an H8SX flash microcontroller at VGA resolution. The display is mostly static, with a few buttons and light animation for feedback. But even with the simple graphic animation, the visual impact of the customer is great, making the end product very attractive. In the past, the problem with adding a color panel like this has been the difficulty and the high cost of the controller that drives the panel itself. So for the next few minutes, I'll show you solutions from Renaissance that use as little as a 16-bit flash microcontroller not only drive the color panel, but also to run the remainder of the application. I'll also give you a quick look at the software development tools and the software available that you can build your own application. But first I'll describe to you the simple connections between a color TFT panel and its controller. Since we're talking about graphic animation and not full motion video, the connections to the panel are all single-ended digital signals, not high-speed differential signals. These panels typically receive up to 8 bits each of the colors red, green, and blue, or RGB, and it's this combination that determines the color of each pixel. TFT panels must be refreshed continuously, and this is managed by vertical and horizontal timing strobes, as well as clocking signals. And finally, there are optional signals to flip or invert the image. That's all there is to it. It's a very simple interface. Now let's consider three ways to drive a TFT LCD panel. The first way is to use a flash MCU connected to an external TFT controller chip. These TFT controllers make use of either an internal or an external frame buffer to store the image. Either way, this is a very expensive solution. The second way is to use a ROMless microprocessor. Now these MPUs that can drive a TFT panel typically run at 200 MHz or higher. And they execute code from internal cache memory, which is loaded from external SD RAM, which is typically loaded from external flash. So for light to moderate graphic animation, this solution is overkill and has a higher total system cost than a smaller <coughs> MCU system. The third way is to use a flash MCU with an external RAM frame buffer. In this case, it's either an H8S 16-bit MCU or an H8SX 32-bit MCU from Renaissance. These MCUs have an external DMA feature that allows the MCU to drive the TFT panel directly with minimal loading on the CPU itself. The frame buffer can be SRAM or PSRAM or SDRAM, giving you options to reach the lowest system cost based on the level of graphic animation that you'll be doing and the screen resolution that you've chosen. Now taking a closer look at this direct drive solution, the external DMA controller automatically manages the transfer of RGB data from the frame buffer to the TFT panel using the external data bus of the microcontroller. The MCU's timer synchronized the data movement and once this process is started, the TFT panel is automatically refreshed over and over. Direct Drive isolates the CPU from refreshing the display using only 5% of the CPU's bandwidth, freeing it up to run the main application. Now let's look at the tools available to start your own development. Shown here is a demonstration kit which provides you with a hardware platform. It has a 5.7 inch QVGA TFT panel with a backlight and a touchscreen, an H8S 16-bit flash MCU, the cabling, plus the CD with the source code for the free graphics API and examples. There's also a 60-day version of the development environment we call Hue for high-performance embedded workbench. Here's the 16-bit H8S MCU running at 32 megahertz, driving a QVGA display at 60 frames per second with 16 bits per pixel color depth. It's interactive through the touch panel, as you can see with the slider bar, LED buttons, and potentiometer. All the images you see here, including the buttons and sliders, the Stonehenge image, the text fonts are based on manipulation of bitmap images. This graphic user interface was built using the free graphics API from Renaissance. 
Another example, this one using a 32-bit H8SX MCU, driving a VGA display at 60 Hz and displaying JPEG images. Using the demonstration kit, you can modify the graphics program and reprogram the flash in the microcontroller using this serial cable that's included in the kit. But for full debugging capability, you'll need to purchase this E10A JTAG programming and debugging module. Let's see how to manipulate a bitmap image using U. We're connected by USB on this side of the E10A and JTAG on the target side. You can see that the image of the rotating moon is off-center. Let's move it back to the middle of the panel. Taking a look around Hue, we find familiar features such as project management here on the left, a source editor here in the middle, and an output window on the bottom. Hue supports many debugging features such as hardware breakpoints, tracing, and code profiling. So let's open up the C file that has the function which copies the bitmap images of the moon to the panel. Here we have demo task C, and we search for the function LCD bitmap copy, which is part of the free graphics API. So we search, here's the function, and in that you see the list of bitmap arrays, which are the phases of the moon, the destination pointer to the frame buffer, and the X and Y coordinates of the bitmap on the screen. I'll change these coordinates to recenter the moon on the, on the display. and I'll recompile and now I'll program the flash and now the moon is back at the center I hope this gives you a flavor of how easy it is to modify these graphic applications with Hue if you require more advanced graphic animation such as vectored line drawings creating windows or widgets or alpha blending you can turn to one of our third-party partners for example the graphic library from Seger called EMWin has many enhanced features to build your user interface, such as widgets and high-speed clipping, graphing, animated indicators, and more as you see here. So that's it. You've seen how a flash microcontroller can drive a color TFT display with animation and even a touchscreen. You've seen a hardware platform available to help get you started. You've had a look at the Hue development environment, and you've seen the free graphics API from Renaissance for basic use. And you've also okay. seen an advanced graphics library from Seger called EMware. So why not take advantage of this and get started today? Contact New Horizons using the information shown here for an on-site demonstration or to purchase a kit or to answer any questions.